In late 2007, the eyes of the world were drawn to the Italian city of Perugia for the gruesome murder of a foreign exchange student and twisted tales of sex games gone wrong that emerged from its picturesque bouquet of steep mountain streets and centuries old buildings. Mirjet Kircher, a 21 year old from Surrey, England, had been sexually assaulted and stabbed to death with her 20-year-old American roommate, Amanda Knox, and Knox's boyfriend, Rafaeli Solicito, emerging as primary suspects, although all conclusive physical evidence pointed elsewhere. Italian prosecutors focus on the alleged wrongdoings of the University of Washington student, whose MySpace nickname of Foxy. Knox and Solicito were eventually acquitted, but only after they were twice convicted and spent years in jail over a nightmare of a case that covered the better part of a decade and failed to satisfy the families of both the accused and the victim. September 20, 2007, Knox moves into her Ferrugia cottage. The cottage already occupied by Kircher and two Italian women in the upstairs apartment and four male students in one below. It's said to be in a bad neighborhood with drug dealers lingering at the nearby basketball court. October 25, 2007, Knox meets Solicito at a classical music concert. Following Kircher's early departure, Knox begins talking to the shy. 23-year-old computer science student she described as an Italian Harry Potter. So the city later visits a bar called The Chick, where Knox is working part-time as a bartender, setting the rip but intense relationship in motion. After Knox returns to the cottage in the late morning to find her roommate's door locked and an unplugged toilet in a bloody bathroom, Italian postal police break down the door to discover a semi-naked creature under a blanket, her throat was slush. November 6, 2007, Knox Solicito and bar owner Dia Patrick Lumumba are arrested. Following a night of grueling interrogation, Knox signs a confession, which she admits to being in another room of the cottage while her legit boss, Lumumba, killed her roommate. Along with the confession, Knox and Solicito problems are complicated by their changing accounts of the night in question. At first, they claimed they were together all night. Then they said they were apart for a few hours. Then they couldn't remember. And the seemingly carefree attitude they displayed in the murders aftermath by going lingerie shopping. November 15, 2007 An incriminating kitchen knife is reported to have found Solicitor's home. The 8 inch knife has traces of Kircher's DNA on the blade and Knox's DNA on the handle. Solicito later writes that he had once accidentally freaked Kircher's hand while the three of them were cooking. November 20, 2007, Rudy Gillet is arrested. Gillet, a 20 year old student Ferrugia, is pulled from a train in Germany after investigators find his DNA on bloody prints at the crime scene and inside Kircher's body. Gilly says that he had consexual sex with the victim that night and that he was in the bathroom when an identified man entered and killed Kircher. Meanwhile, Lumumba is released from custody, though he remains a suspect. January 10, 2008, Solicitor's DNA is reported to have been found on Kircher's bra clubs. The collapse retrieved from Kircher's room nearly seven weeks after the murder bolsters the prosecution's assertions that the suspects engaged in a dangerous sex game with the victim. The witness also supports the defense's criticisms of a sloppy investigation and contaminated crime scene. October 28, 2008, today's sentence to 30 years in prison, Knox and Solicito are ordered to stand trial. Kide had elected to undergo a fast track trial separate from the other defendants. That same day, 
a judge determines that there is enough evidence for Knox and Sorosito to stand full trial on murder charges. After 14 months in jail, Knox and Sorosito appear in a federal court for the start of the murder trial. The presiding judge determines the high profile proceedings can be held with the media present, but no live television coverage. November 18, 2009, he day places Knox at the crime scene. The Knox solicited the trial nearing its end. He then makes headlines during his separate appeal with a spontaneous statement in which he recounts Knox and Kircher getting into an argument before the latter's killing by an unidentified man. He then later sees his sentence reduced to 16 years. At the conclusion of a trial that saw more than 50 hearings and dozens of witnesses called, the defendants are convicted of Kircher's murder, with the Thierry Knox sentenced to 26 years and Solicito receiving a 25-year sentence. Additionally, the two are ordered to pay more than $7 million to Kircher's family, and Knox orders to pay Lumumba around $60,000 for defamation. June 27, 2011, the appeal begins. Knox and Solicitor's appeal opens with Gilday testifying against his former two co-defendants. He also denies the claim by another convict that Gilday had confided to him that Knox and Solicitor were innocent. July 25, 2011, forensic experts call the evidence into question. Two court-appointed experts testify that the knife reportedly used in the attack carried no trace of blood and that there was no DNA on the brass clubs that used to implicate Solicito. An affiliate court, the jury of six citizens and two judges overturned the convictions of Knox and Solicito in Perugia. Knox, who had delivered a terrible statement in Italian earlier in the day, is overcome by emotion and assisted out of the court. March 26, 2013, Italy's highest court orders a new trial. Italy's Court of Cassation reopens the case by overturning the acquittal. Knox, who had since returned to Seattle, Washington, and was set to release a book about her ordeal, decried such a ruling. When the prosecution's theory of my involvement in Meredith's murder has been repeatedly revealed, to be completely unfounded and unfair. September 30, 2013. The retrial begins. Three months after the court of cassation issues its reasoning that criticized the deficiencies, contradictions, and illogical conclusions of the appeals court, a new trial opens in Florence without Knox and Solicito present. Following 11 and a half hours of deliberations, a jury convicts Knox and Solicito for a second time. The judge, talking on two and a half years to the former sentence, Solicito is ordered to surrender his passport while Knox, legally in Seattle, will not have to worry about extradition unless the ruling is upheld. March 27, 2015, the convictions are again overturned. The Court of Cassation ends the long-running legal saga by overturning the convictions of Knox and Solicito, save for the former's defamation of Rumumba. Knox released a statement describing her as tremendously relieved and grateful for the outcome. January 24, 2019 Italy is ordered to pay damages to Knox. While her legal problems were already resolved, the European Court of Human Rights adds icing to the victory cake by ordering Italy to pay Knox more than 20,000 US dollars in damages for the harsh interrogation she endured early in the investigation. I am grateful for their wisdom in acknowledging the reality of Paul's confessions and the need to reform police interrogations methods. Knox writes afterward in her blog 